Hi there. Let's take a look at a concept called correlation, which is all about trying to see whether there is a relationship between variables that might be relevant to business decisions. So let's start with a question. Let's imagine you uh, you own, you run an ice cream business. If it gets really hot outside, would you expect sales to increase? Yeah, probably. There's definitely a, a relationship, isn't there, between uh, the warmer weather and people wanting to demand more ice cream. What about this one? If you ran a soft drinks business and you decided that you wanted to increase your advertising spend in order to increase sales, would that work? Is there some kind of relationship between advertising sp uh, spend and sales? Well, possibly. And lastly, what about if you're running a business? Is there some kind of relationship between maximising employee satisfaction and maximising customer satisfaction? Well, the answer is uh, to that third question. Yes, there is. There's been some fairly recent data that shows there is a positive relationship between uh, employee satisfaction leading to higher customer satisfaction. And this is a great example of correlation. So correlation is all about looking at the, the nature, the strength of the relationship between two variables. So let's just spend a few minutes just going through what we mean by this concept of a relationship between two variables. The starting point for correlation is to uh, remember that there are two parts of this. There is a variable that causes something to happen. This is the independent variable. This is the factor that causes something else to change. And what changes is what's known as the dependent variable. Now, put this back into our question from earlier on. In this case, remember back to the ice cream question, the independent variable would be the increase in outside temperatures, maybe a prolonged period of warm sunshine. That might be the factor that causes a change in the dependent variable, in this case, sales of ice cream, which may be influenced by hot weather. So that's the key with correlation, is to remember that we're looking at cause and effect. And is there, is there, is there a relationship? And if there is, what kind of relationship is there? Now, just to show you, to take this concept further, let's imagine we uh, did some research and we identified a series of data points that uh, compared uh, for a particular level of spend of advertising per week uh, with the number of customer inquiries that we get into the business. And there we go. Those are the data points that are mapped there. So you might have had a data point up here. That, that amount of advertising and that led to a certain number of customer inquiries per week. Perhaps down here, fewer or lower spend on advertising led to a lower number of customer inquiries. Is there a relationship between advertising per week and the number of customer inquiries? Well, the answer is yes, it looks like there is from those data points which are plotted there. And you can then plot what's known as a line of least resistance or sorry, a line of uh, best fit. Um, into the data point to measure the relationship. So correlation, what we normally do is we measure it by using what's known as a scatter diagram, where we plot all the different points. Don't forget the y-axis here on the left. We normally use the y-axis to show the dependent variable. And on the bottom, the independent variable, the factor that causes the change. And what we can then do is apply what's known as a regression line or a line of best fit to try to work out what is the distance between those data points. What is the relationship, the strength of the relationship? Now, you won't be asked to calculate a line of best fit or a regression line in any other business, but it's just understanding that this helps us identify the nature of the relationship. Now, this is quite important. It might be worth pausing the video just for a few seconds just to jot these down into your notes or just to make sure that you're happy. There are three different types of correlation. Firstly, there is what's known as positive correlation. And what this means is, as the independent variable increases, so too does the dependent variable. So in the case of our ice cream example, the independent variable was the, was the, the, uh, the temperature, the heat. And the dependent variable was uh, the sales of ice cream, and uh, we identified a positive correlation, didn't we? Because as temperatures rose, so too did sales of ice cream. Or we, we expected that to be the case. Negative correlation means that there is a relationship, 
but it means that as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable falls in value. And lastly, no correlation. Plotting a series of data points, we can't discern a particular relationship. We can't try to predict what's going to happen between the independent and dependent variable. So just to remind ourselves here, the two key, three key types of, of correlation, they're positive correlation as the independent variable increases, so too does the dependent variable. In this case, this chart here shows the, the dollar, the pound to dollar exchange rate, which is our dependent, um, sorry, independent variable on the uh, x-axis. There it is. And as that increases, so too does the number of holidays that people take from the UK to Florida. And we would expect that to be the case because as the pound gets stronger, as the exchange rate increases, that makes overseas holidays more affordable. Your pound goes further in Florida, at Disneyland and uh, MGM Studios and the rest. It looks like there's a positive correlation there. Here's an example of a negative correlation. In this case, uh, our independent variable on the x-axis is the interest rate that gets paid, or you have to pay on your mortgage. And the dependent variable is the demand for new houses. And the data points there suggest that as interest rates fall, demand for new houses um, increases, or vice versa. Demand falls as interest rates go up. Negative correlation. And here we go. Here's a, an example where the data suggests there's no correlation. In this case, we've tried to plot a relationship between the number of weddings per year in the UK and the demand for sausage rolls and savoury pastries or pasties, including vegan sausage rolls. And um, I don't know whether that data is right or not, but you can see from the data plotted there that there isn't really a, a clear relationship between the two of them. And neither would you expect there to be. Oh, there we go. Last thing just to say, don't forget, correlation is about um, the relationship, but it's mainly about the strength of the relationship. It can be positive and negative. Strong correlation means there is a uh, little space between the data points and the, the line of best fit, which means that there is a, a, a predictable relationship there. A weak correlation says, yeah, there is a relationship, but it's not quite as predictable as, uh, as it would be with a strong relationship. There we go. No calculations involved there, but hopefully that's a useful introduction to this idea of uh, positive and negative correlation.